cycle, it would be a shit show. I know this because this is how I started in this game. I was one of those guys. And the scarier stats are, is that nine out, look around in this room, nine out of 10 people that you're looking at will not exist within the next decade. That's the math of entrepreneurship, the unsexy part that people aren't talking about. So clearly something drastic needs to change in this whole industry. And that's what I'm gonna to share today. This is how I ended up at my very first marketing event. Uh, event. I was desperate, paycheck to paycheck, living at my parents' house, the typical shit. And when I started in digital marketing in this space, there was really only three ways to make money. One was selling diet pills. You know what the other one was? Selling dick pills. You ever bought those? Not you, you, you? Yeah, dick pills, they increase the size of your penis. What are they called, Pekka? Pekka, whatever. I digress. When I got to the game, this was all that was available. And also this stuff. MLM, some kind of pyramid scheme that was about selling another powder or something. This was all the digital marketing space was. And then after some regulation, some much needed regulation, and a little bit of integrity, the industry evolved. And now we come into this guru era. Anybody ever seen a guru before by show of hands? You're scrolling online, they're a guru. So this industry's changed. Now it's thieves disguised as funnel hackers. <laughs> Strike a chord there. Noobs, beginners, positioned as consultants. <laughs> And now we just downright have liars calling themselves marketers. What the fuck? Oh, buddy? buddy? What the fuck? Um, yeah, marketing sucks, dude. It needs to change. Because it's been missing one thing. You know what that is? Honesty. Honesty. Just feel like there's a lack of realism in the space. So, right now I'm gonna give you two lists. I'm gonna give you a start list. And I'm also going to give you a stop list. Things that you gotta stop doing right away, okay? So let's get started. The first would be number one, to stop the humble brag. You said, Billy, what do you mean by humble brag? I mean this story. Seven years ago, I was broke on my couch and I didn't know what I was going to do to survive. I just, poor me. This is a room full of entrepreneurs. Raise your hand if you ever lived on a fucking couch before. Yeah, it's kind of the process. That's what you do, it doesn't work anymore. We've been there, we've done that. So instead be honest. Hey, it's not been an easy road for me. I started off in Brooklyn and my father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. It's Donald Trump! This was so good, he became the fucking president of my country. That's good, huh? Yeah, that's deep. Um, second thing, I'll call him the partial fits. Sounds like this, bro. I closed 700,000 pounds a day. <laughs> Bullshit! You closed 30,000 pounds a day and you hope to collect 670,000. There's a difference. And people can see through this. Honestly, it's needed and it's about damn time. Secondly, is stop talking with a stick in your butt or your arse. Your bum? One of those. Like, the, the bum? Bum arse? Bum arse? Bum arse? Uh, booty. Uh, like this form of, hello, my name is Theodore Robinson and I am a digital marketer. It just doesn't work. People want to buy from humans. It's up. You should read this ad. Casual. You'll be amazed at all the things you can split test of how much better conversions you'll see when you just talk like how I heard you guys talking in the pub last night during the game. It's completely different. Third, this one's big. Stop hiding. When I came into the digital marketing space, and it's still pretty popular now, the only ads that you would see are these ones. A hand writing things down. You wouldn't see anybody's face in them. And now it's kind of like expanded on TikTok because you don't even have to have your face in there. You don't have to have your voice in there. You can do text and overlays. You can be completely hidden. And don't get me wrong, you can sell things like this. I've done it. But when you start showing your face on video, there's a big difference. Both of these methodologies can grow your business, but only one of these builds a brand. Make sense? Make sense? Yes. I agree with myself. 
Who of you guys right now, we're gonna shake shit up a little bit, do some weird things. Who here has an iPhone by a show of hands? Hold it up high. Disgusting. <laughs> Android, anybody? My peoples. Um, 20 years ago, when they first came into the game, 99% of the market was dominated by PC. PC was everything. Apple was the joke. Like, you wouldn't have an iMac, anything. It wasn't compatible. It was overly expensive. Uh, they weren't trusted. It was like, who the hell would go with this product? It was a bit of a David and Goliath situation. How the hell could Apple ever overcome these odds? So how did they do it? Unknown to unstoppable. They did it with videos. Simple videos, like the one I'm about to show you right now. Without sound. Should I add a bit or should we do this again? Okay, hold on, I'm gonna try that again. Hold on, ready, boy? And they did it with video. <laughs> Simple videos, like the one I'm about to play right now, with sound. Um, so how can Apple overcome PC? Well, the answer is simple. They did it. <laughs> don't, don't fuck it. They did it with the video. Like the one I'm about to play right now with sound. more videos we're going to need sound for, okay. So, the long story short, does anybody remember this ad campaign by show of hands? Oh, uh, it's even worse, now I gotta play the fucking video. Okay, here's what happens. This, you, how do we, are we company? Are we gonna be no-go or are we gonna be good? Okay, I'll explain to you what happens. So essentially, there's this ad campaign. Apple shoots about 200 of them. And all it is is this guy in a suit that represents PCs and then this laid back cool kid in jeans and a t-shirt that talks about how much better Apple is than PC. They run this ad campaign for years and years and years and spend millions of dollars. And the next thing you know, Apple is on top and this entire room is there and they're now one of the most profitable companies in the world. And I promise that point's way more impactful when you watch the video, which now it just happens to be ready. It just happens to be ready. <laughs> we can try one more time, okay, here we go. <laughs> and three, two, one. Hello. These days, we both run Microsoft at Office. We share files. It's great. We just get along. Is he? Okay. Hi, I'm a PC. Okay, we'll pass over. We'll be on that. Yeah, I had to restart there. You, you know how it is. No, actually, I don't. Follow blood max. Don't have to. I'm gonna go get IT. Keep an eye. And this was around. The, let's pop it up for sound, baby. Yeah. So when they started shooting these videos, it was around the time when PC was crashing all the time, and that was the big thing. So every single imperfection that PC had, Apple went at it with videos like this. And it's funny because you look at these videos now, you're like, God, that's some shitty quality. It's like they just took out their cell phone and said go, and then they just put out a series of them at work. And I'm like, that's the magic of it. It didn't need to be fancy, it didn't need to be all of those things. So, I think that you guys can make videos like this for your companies. And I think we're gonna do it right now, together. So, here's how this is gonna work. There's three elements to really make a simple video really profitable. One of those is props, write this down real quick, write this down. And when I say props, I mean it could be anything. Extra large items, extra small items, it, it doesn't really matter. The things that are weird, a pattern interrupt, obscure, unique, those will work. But the biggest benefit of having a prop in your videos is for you. Because most of the time, we'll be nervous when we have to get on video. People are going to be staring at us. But when you're holding a prop, you'll notice how much more confident you are because inside of our heads, it feels like people are looking at the prop. They're not looking at you. So it's a little secret confidence booster. The second aspect when it comes to making it at Amazon.com, you can find props. Uh, the second aspect, <laughs> yeah, big one. Uh, oh yeah, we even have props for you today. Do we have props for them today? Okay, this is good. You guys gotta hold it up if you got the prop. Yeah, it's a fucking piece of velcro. Very underwhelming, okay? Um, next component is knowing what to say in a video. 
Sometimes you see a video and you go, that person's just talented, they're charismatic. Wrong. The reason why it seems unscripted is because they're so, well, rehearsed. The best ads, the best shows, the best movies, they know exactly what they're going to say. So it's not that you suck on video, it's not that you're trying to be lazy, take shortcuts, oh, I'll just swing it, that's a silly idea. And then the third component of this is the music. And this is the spot. So there's a resource I'd like to use, take a quick picture of this one, it's called audiojungle.net. That's audiojungle.net. The reason why I love this website is because you can search for music based on emotion. So you can come to this site, type in the word sad, and then we'll give you a hundred thousand different songs that will make you feel depressed. And for like 19 bucks, you can buy the song and you can legally use them in your videos. Huh. And you'll be surprised how much of a different person you show up on camera when there's music in the background. You got the prop, you know what to say, you're prepared. And I'm going to prove out this theory right now. So, um, why don't we go ahead and we're going to do the same script three different times with different music because I want you to feel how it changes your energy. So, I'm going to need you guys to go ahead and stand up. Stand up. And what I want you to do, yeah, it's about to get weird. What I want you to do is I want you to partner with the person next to you. Don't switch your seats and try to find the cutest lad. Just the person next to you. No. All right, team up, team up, team up, buddy up. And here's what's gonna happen. Take out your cell phones. Oh, no, so wait, wait, wait. Take out your mobiles. Partner with the person next to you. And I'm gonna assign you both a role right now. The person with the longer hair, you're gonna be the actor or the actress first. And the shorter hair, you're going to be the director. Don't worry, we're gonna switch. So get ready, everyone's going to do it. And directors, when you're holding the phone, make sure it's horizontal, that means left to right, like the picture, look up the screen, you got a cheat sheet. And then, I'm gonna give you what to say, because I told you every great video, you come prepared with a script, and it has to do with what's in your hand. You ready? Powerful words, take note. Velcro, what a rip off. Okay, so it's super creative. I'm a six year old, it's a dad joke, whatever. So now you know your lines, okay? So before you go, I'm gonna be a good leader and I'm gonna show you how this should be done. We're gonna do this three times, Velcro, we're gonna rip off, but every single time with a different emphasis on a different type of music. I want you to see how it changes your delivery. So the first one we're gonna do is sad, because we wanna end on a high note. So I'll go first, shall we? Uh, can we just get the lights just a bit there? And go ahead and hit this video. This is my sad example. <laughs> my voice like that that velcro really got me okay <laughs> so we're going to start this off with partners remember actors and actresses you know who you are get ready when i count down to three there's going to be the song that's playing and i want you to look at the camera hit the cord and i want you to give me the saddest velcro what a rip off that you can possibly think of okay so here it comes get ready for it wait for the count it's happening in three two one sad velcro what a rip off go Don't forget your prop. Stay steady, we're not done yet. It's kind of sad, it's depressing. When the music's going, the energy's up. You can feel it. Now we're going to do the same thing. But this time, instead of sad, we're going to go angry. And, you know, I'm going to lead by example and let you guys know how to treat that. Here it goes. So 
One more time, okay? This time we're going to switch up the emotion a bit. And this time we're going to go with inspiration. Something positive, something uplifting, and something I will also lead with. Here we go. And I want you to give your most inspired, passionate, Velcro, what a rip on. Here we go, when the music starts in three, two, one, let's go! Tell you what, I love doing this exercise because, like, I see even the most like stiff, rigid people are like Velcro, <laughs> and you see a completely different side of yourself. And so, what I want to point out is you saw this Apple versus Android commercial. It was literally two guys standing there having a dialogue. It wasn't crazy. They played some cheeky little music and they used the prop, which is the computer. It was so simple but so wildly effective and what i want to point out here is video isn't hard putting yourself out there is so many of us know what we need to do but then here you are in this room full of strangers to a lot of you never met the person and you're jumping around like an idiot yelling them for what a ripoff you guys look absolutely ridiculous <laughs> so <laughs> everything you want's on the other side of fear don't forget that, okay? Um, back to the start and stop list. Here's a big one. Stop calling yourself an introvert. I feel like people, is that what you guys say when you say something good, get that out of beer? I better hear that shit a lot. Come on, give me a beer. Um, stop calling yourself an introvert. Like, you act as if like, you came out of your mom's vagina, and then there was a sticker, it's like, you're a fucking introvert, you're an extrovert, you're there. That's a self-assigned identity that you've given to yourself because we refuse to practice uncomfortable positions and situations. That, get that, I like this, yeah, I like London, I'll be back here. So, but, but my point is, is most people here would ironically identify as an introvert. But yet, all of you just did the Velcro, what a rip off. Let that sink in. So continuing on, what you should start doing is going to improv classes. So I found one for you guys. If you go to londonimprovtheater.com, you can sign up for an improv class. You're like, what's improv? You literally like go in a circle with 12 strangers and just start role playing. It's not sexual. It can be, but don't. It's not. Whatever. Okay, but you, that's the point. That's, that's all it is. In other words, practice not being an introvert. Continue around. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. Six, stop being arrogant. And what I mean by that are these words. I can figure it out on my own. You know how long that kept me stuck? So stupid. Never done this before. Oh, I want to make eight figures. I've never done it before. I'll figure it out on my own. It's climb Mount, climb Mount Everest. Yeah, I'll figure it out on my own. Psych. Why do we do it in business? Start copying what works. You guys familiar with the Facebook Ads Library? It's amazing. Literally, you can go there, facebookadslibrary.com, type in a word like marketing and see every single example of a marketing ad that you can see. Go there, type in a word like insurance, see every single example of insurance ad with a click of a button. It costs you absolutely nothing. So you don't even have to be a genius or wildly creative. Just study what's working. Even in the most quote unquote boring of industries. Another one, good resource that people sleep on is the video ad vaults. Right? And that's by TubeSift. So my buddy Justin Sardi created this thing called Video Ad Vault. And you can see every single YouTube ad that anybody's ever ran. Even if the videos are unlisted. Not private. Unlisted. If it's ever been ran before, it's an ad. So that's called VideoAdVault.com. That one does cost money, but I think it's super duper cheap. Okay? Number seven on our start and stop list. Stop buying books! Whoa, fuck this guy, what happened? <laughs> no, no, stop buying books and start hiring the author. 
So many people value the information. I need the information for free. Da, 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 da. Like, why read the fucking book when you can just go meet with the author? What do you think is going to be more valuable? So I use the example of Kanye West. That's questionable. I probably shouldn't have him in my slides, but whatever. Um, he does an excellent job of, damn, I don't read, but he's friends with Elon. Elon, everyone looks up to him. He's That's his guy. He has the conversations with him. Hire the author. It's the fast track. This one is big for this conference, this entrepreneur marketing conference. Stop marketing. Fuck jab, jab, right hook. What? You guys okay? Uh, you good? You alright? You have a hard time? What do I mean by this? Like, I come from, my parents both grew up on welfare. What does this mean? We're poor. And when you have a small business and you're just starting, you know what you don't have time to do? Jab, jab, right hook. It's my fucking least favorite advice because it was from a rich person. Only rich people will tell you, you got six months to make your money back. I got bills in six days, motherfucker. Six months? Who has six months to wait to, huh? Or have time to jab? So, look, marketing is great, and like, email sequences is great, but sometimes you gotta be more like this fucking dude. The Sham Wow guy, you guys ever seen him in London? Oh, he's great, check him out. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a shammy, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this, it just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. Wine, coffee, cola, head stain. Not only is the damage going to be on top, there's your mildew. That is going to smell. See that? Put on the spill, turn it over without even putting any pressure. 50% of the cola right there. You fall. For three minutes, this guy does this shit. Yeah, I'm wild. Look at his wife. Use it on a boat. Use it on a car. Da, da, da. And he's just selling you in your face. And for some reason, you can't stop watching. We live in a world where everyone's like, oh, don't ask the customer to buy while you're shopping on Amazon. Literally, you're only in this conference ordering your shit. I'm not going to get any groceries. I'm going to order that real fast. People do not care if you ask them to buy. They care how you ask them to buy. If you're not making them laugh, having fun with it, then of course it's a nuisance. But if you can have fun and make someone smile, you can ask them to buy your shit as much as you want. Do it all the time, buy my shit, who cares? If you're having fun, okay? Um, next, some of my favorite saying sales tools. I want you guys to take a quick screenshot of this, okay? Uh, these two slides in particular. So, Zoom. If any of you are selling anything, turn on Zoom, like keep all of your business the same, but just turn on Zoom so you can see someone face to face, and I promise you, you will increase your versions at least double, conversions at least double, just by being face to face. Because the only reason why someone doesn't buy is because they don't believe you. That's it. If they believe they were gonna lose a million pounds in three weeks, they would buy you shit every single time. They don't believe you. And part of the reason why they don't believe you is because they can't see you. I don't trust people I can't see you. Just the voice over the phone, turn on Zoom. But this next feature people sleep on, it's called Zoom phone, not the same as Zoom. Zoom phone. The reason why I like Zoom phone is because of this picture that you're looking at here. It says whisper, barge, takeover. So right now I have a team that I gotta manage and they're on the phones all day and of course we do marketing too. But right now I can pick up my cell phone, click a button to whichever sales rep that I want and press that whisper button and I can hear all of their conversation within two seconds. Not to mention when I hit the whisper button, I can talk to my sales rep and the other side of the mobile can't hear. Huh. In addition to that, it gives me the barge setting, which if one of my sales reps is saying some crazy shit, I can hit barge and I can jump right into the conversation for like 19 bucks a month. And it records every single one of our phone calls so that we can study it, practice, and actually get better. Is that helpful? Yeah. It's fucking great. That's like 20 bucks I've ever spent. That's Zoom phone, okay? So make sure you're using that. So here's my gift to you guys. In the spirit of, uh, you know, less marketing, more selling, and a jovial way, um, 65 weeks, I did the sales training, it's called Sales Genius Weekly. 65 uh, weeks, I did videos, sales scripts, objection handling, flashcards, everything. Um, literally, I'm just gonna hook you guys up with it for free, no strings attached, nothing weird, nothing crazy at all. Just all of my best sales stuff. So use it for yourself, use it for your team, just go to that website whenever you guys feel like it, selllikebilly.com, and you guys can just have it. my gift to you. Matt made it very clear, Billy, this is a no pitching event, so there's really nothing to buy, just get to download, okay? So I hope that helps you out, selllikebilly.com. Flashcards, practice materials, five minutes a day. It's fucking great, okay? Next, ironically, stop selling your products or services. 
Well, that's confusing. What do I mean by that? Start selling experiences. So take Starbucks, right? It's just a coffee. Coffees get played out and boring. But what do they do during holiday to make it fun? Is they make the fucking cup red. And everyone's like, oh my God, I have to go to Starbucks because you want the Instagrammable moment. And then they get really fancy little indie places. They put like leaves and decorations in your thing. And it makes it become your favorite coffee shop. Same product or service, but now it's become an experience. Remember these words specifically. Give them something to post. People love when they come to your place and post. I won an award, I won a Grammy, give me something to post. I won the championship, give me a trophy, give me something to post. In America, we have the BBB, the Better Business Bureau. Bureau. Like everybody wants to post it, give them something to post. The second that you can go from product to service to experience, you will see an increase in sales. Continuing on, stop exclusively relying on referrals. Especially in the beginning, this is a mark that we're usually proud about. Hey, I've grew my whole business, I haven't done an ounce of marketing, it's all been referrals. But that's also why you're stuck. When you look at the biggest companies in the world and you look at their public numbers, what's the biggest expense they have on their P&Ls? Marketing. But we sit here and wonder why we can't grow. That's not something to take pride in. The other thing I want you guys to do is I want you to focus on, specifically, influencer marketing. It is so farly, like underpriced. So here's an example. There's this mom influencer, it's Mar Cleaning, okay? She uses a new mop in a TikTok video. Someone cleaning, something that none of us like to do. The thing gets 12.1 million TikTok views, ends up with 140,000 Amazon purchases. From a mom showing how she cleans their house. This is the way that we do business, but the thing that I want to point out to you guys today is people pretend like influencer marketing is new. But ironically, it's the way that we've always purchased things. For example, do you guys know this guy? Probably not out here, I don't know. Is this, do you guys know this boxer, George Foreman? Yes. Sorry, it sounds stupid American now, whatever. So this guy, George Foreman, he's the most famous boxer right there with Mike Tyson. But he's more famous for his fucking cooking machine than George Foreman grow. You can be an influence, and it doesn't even have to be in your industry. As long as you're famous, you can make something else famous. Do you guys have this guy out here, John Travolta? I'm just trolling you now. Of course you do. Fucking like John Travolta, right? This guy fucking smokes, and he makes smoking super cool. And then, if you see the movie Grease, the motherfucker wears booty shorts. Now everybody's wearing booty shorts. It's like, what the hell is going on? And even guys are singing this damn song. You know the words? You want to sing it? Summer, what was that you do? Oh no, he wants to sing, y'all. Alright, fuck it. Here we go. Ready? I'm just walking around. He didn't raise his hand. <laughs> this was influencer marketing before it was influencer marketing. Right? They're telling us what's cool. And then I... It is a good song. Okay, but then ironically, it continues. You take the biggest influence in the world, right? Like a Kylie Jenner. And here she is with the makeup line. She's not a makeup artist. She never has been. But boom, first year, billion dollars plus. And then it keeps going. This motherfucker, The Rock, most famous guy in the world, all of a sudden after the Fast and the Furious, he says, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna make some tequila. And we're all like, I'm just trying, it's actually pretty good, I don't know. Because he's an influencer. Influencer marketing has not been this thing that's just arisen, it's been around forever, and it's the way that we make buying decisions. Uh, take a quick picture of this, just to make me happy, please. Never forget it. The best product doesn't win, the most well-known one does. Never forget that. You guys know, did you guys have the, uh, the Snuggie? Yeah, like the blanket with arms? Yeah, that was like the fourth time that product was tried, the other ones just had shitty marketing. It's never the idea. You watch Shark Tank, you watch Dragon's Den, and you go, gosh, damn it, I have the idea. It's never the idea. It's always the execution. Okay, let's continue on. Um, this is a stupid example, but uh, TikTokers, to really like illustrate their power, especially this room full of adults, right? It's easy to belittle on TikTok, the kids on TikTok, whatever, TikTok, yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys can resurrect old ass songs. Songs that nobody's thinking about anymore, okay? I'm gonna play a song that was made in 1985. 
But right now, in the, there was no streaming, there was no iPads, there was no anything when this song came out. It was just radio, maybe vinyl or cassettes or some shit. And now it has 497 million streams on this old ass song. Because TikTok went crazy with it. <laughs> Buying TikTokers, man. Crazy thing is, it costs you like a hundred bucks to get somebody to post something. Most TikTokers and people with decent followings, they don't make any money right now. They're still living at their parents' house. So if you're like, yo, 50 bucks, it's gonna make them feel good just to say that they get paid to do what they do. But yet everybody's overlooking this opportunity, okay? Um, back to the list. 11, stop saying or, because the answer is both. I get the question all the time. Someone's gonna ask me today, even though I'm showing this slide. Yeah, they, you know, I got this product, but what should I do? Should I go Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, what do you think makes more sense? All of them, all of them. An interesting stat, our TikTok rep let us know that like 35% of their audience is only on TikTok. They don't use anything else. Imagine missing that, okay? Considering on, stop playing locally or nationally, start thinking globally. I just got back from speaking from Brazil, I'm here now, and I say this ignorantly, like, you just don't know what you don't know. Like, for me, being from California and San Diego, the last thing I'm thinking about is there's digital marketers in London. It sounds stupid to say, right? Of course, but when you start a small business, your brain sometimes starts playing small. Don't forget, so many of you have digital products that the entire world can use. Don't sleep on an international audience. I did it for a long time and I regret it. This one, stop exclusively selling high ticket. In the coaching space specifically, I hear this a lot, only do high ticket. And what fundamentally changed my life is I went on a trip uh, to Fiji with Tony Robbins, uh, my buddy Russell Brunson and uh, Lewis Howes and a couple of other digital marketers. And I'm sitting there with Tony, you guys heard Tony Robbins of course? Yes, yes, it's kind of a flex, whatever. So I'm sitting there with Tony Robbins and he said something that changed my life forever and he said, Billy, I have an intimate relationship with millions of people. And I said, what the fuck does that mean, Tony? He's like, is this some Yoda shit? He's like, no, think about it. Tony Robbins content does what? Saves marriages, it stops people from committing suicide, it brings, it gets people to start a business. I saw a YouTube video, I started a business with Tony Robbins, and he's like, that's how I have an intimate relationship with people. Because the content that I put out fundamentally shifts their lives. And I have that with millions of people, and it hit me. I was like, fuck, I'll never be able to do that if I keep playing the high ticket where I can only hit X amount of people. In order to do that, I need something that scales. So I came back that month, and uh, our chief marketing officer, Hector, somewhere here, he's like, fuck it, let's sell one of our products for like 30 bucks and see what happens. And I go, no, let's sell all of them for 30 bucks and see what happens. Wait, we can't do that, everybody freaks out. We're gonna lose all the money, our business is going bye-bye. So we run the promotion just to see what happens. And next thing you know, hey, buy out my shit for 31 bucks. We need $2.1 million that month from low ticket. And then a percentage of people still buying our high ticket. Didn't actually affect the impact of our high ticket. It just gave us another revenue stream. But two million bucks from 31, plus we had more customers, more testimonials, more opportunities, more speaking gigs, and we got to help the people that actually needed to be helped. What's fulfilling about helping somebody who makes money make more fucking money? I couldn't tell you either. So, small, have something in your thing that can reach the masses and do it globally. Next, stop acting like people who can't afford your stuff are beneath you. Sometimes there's rhetoric in this industry, if something can't afford it, we like to talk down to people out of frustration. But remember, that's how a lot of us started. Anybody here start broke? Be the customer that you want to attract. In addition to this, start thinking. Don't know how it works out here, excuse my ignorance, but in the United States, when you go to college, nobody can afford that shit. So what do you do? You take out student loans. You take out a ton of student loans, probably the same for university out here, and that's normal. When you go to buy a car, nobody can afford it, so you finance it. When you go to buy a home, you get a 30 year loan to do it. Every industry in the world is ran off of borrowing money. 
So why aren't you giving your customers a way to finance working with you? Because there's some people who wouldn't be able to afford it that could be your best customers later, okay? 15, stop DMing. DMing will feel spammy. Nobody feels positive when you receive a DM. But try DMing. What I mean by that, I mean direct mailing. People sleep on direct mail, especially if you're in an industry that you consider B2B, where you need to get attention of like one person. This is one of the coolest gifts that I've ever received. It was a champagne bottle, all of them, not because I'm an alcoholic, but look what he put on top of it. Billy Jean, reply to my Instagram. It's fucking good, right? I replied immediately with the video, what's up bro, how can I help you? Yeah. I was so excited, ended up doing a speaking gig and all kinds of stuff and becoming friends. Probably cost him a hundred bucks to send. He's one of one. Check out that conversion rate, one of one. The only thing that bested him is when, is when somebody sent a fucking tire to my office. Legit, a tire. And then they take this message to it. Billy, my drive intensity will leave tread marks all over your floor. We need to connect. I'm the founder and CEO of Blank. We're the fastest growing franchise brand in the world. Call me Mike Drop. It was great until he really left fucking treads on my office floor. I was pissed. But how cool, how creative versus sending out 300 DMs hoping someone does and it also ruins your positioning. Ruins your positioning. When it comes off this, this is cool, this is creative, I'm excited too. So never take your eye off of direct mail. 16, stop selling information. 13 years I've been in the digital marketing game, information was it. Information really did have a big run, but then you had the big dogs come in. LinkedIn Learning, who bought Lynda.com, Udemy, YouTube, Masterclass. What happens when everybody gets into the industry, it devalues the whole thing. That's the marketplace. You can't fight the marketplace. Our job is to respond to it. How do we do it? By selling an experience. So I told you we got 160,000 students in 75 countries. Clearly, we sell education. But when you're really trying to win a prospect, you gotta have something that makes it stand out. So what did we do? We ran out to San Diego, it's a baseball team, the San Diego Padre Stadium for our graduation. Give them an experience, or in addition to that, give them an actual physical location to come learn. It's basically when the market zigs, you gotta zag. Before it was like, you don't have to go to physical location, here's online. Now as everybody goes online, you bring back the physical location, make sense? What? Yeah. All right, just check it. And then the network, right? So those are the four kind of categories that we focus on. If you're in the information game, sell the experience, proximity to the others, the network, and the support. The support to go faster, okay? Here's the final ones. I'm gonna do these in rapid fire. Take your cell phones out because I'm gonna give you some things to snapshot in the detail here. Fuck this stage, I'll just sit down here. Uh, 17, stop split testing colors. Unless, unless you are running a serious amount of advertising dollars, Stop wasting your time with the little things. Logos, colors, nonsense. Always be split testing offers. That's the game. Money back guarantee versus getting started with one dollar. Fifty dollar, uh, fifty buck deposit to speak with someone. See if you qualify for financing. Join my five day challenge. Test offers. Waste zero time. You will know if a promotion is going to work within the first 300 bucks, the first couple posts. Very rarely in all my years of managing a stupid amount of money in advertising dollars, I almost never See an ad campaign that starts shitty get better. Almost never. It goes like this. Test it. Is it a home run? Yes. Spend more money on it. If it's not a home run, stop it right away. Refund it. Change the offer. I promise you, your whole life will change if you approach it like this. Okay? Um, 18. Oh, also, that's a good note. Uh, not only uh, when it comes to testing offers, don't just split test the offer, but test the reason why you're having the promotion. So I ran like graduation, Christmas, retirement, like what's the reason? It's insane how much the reason will also affect your conversions. 18, especially for those looking to build a personal brand or for those that are posting and getting discouraged because you're like, man, I'm not getting the momentum that I really want. You can't be gray. Gray meaning just kind of agreeable with everything that's going on. You have to take a stance, right? The people that gain influence, because you still can grow organically on social, but you can't do it being boring. You gotta choose a sign, okay? Continuing on, 19, stop being perfect. This one right here. Start taking imperfect action. This is my 
third best performing ad ever. I filmed it myself, and half of my fucking head's not in it. I share this because this is so true. And I was pissed that it worked. God damn it. We do all the fancy stuff, and this is what works? This is it? This is what's gonna happen? Okay. Got it. 20. Stop investing your life savings into crypto. <laughs> start, start investing into people. What I mean here is the small business owners, we will invest into a workshop, we will invest into a training, we will invest into crypto, NFTs, but we won't invest into hiring somebody with talent. We can never afford it. Then you'll go buy a fucking platypus. <laughs> like, open sea. So you fucking hire someone with a platypus, dude? What the fuck is going on here? Um, also, it's more fun. Quick story, I walk into my friend's house, I was a small entrepreneur, I was living in my mom's house, I was probably making like 30K a month though, so I felt like I was balling, like I was doing my thing. I go in my boy's office, he has like 10 people on his team and he's got a basketball court in it. I walk in and I'm like a hater. I'm like, bro, this is such a waste of money, why do you have all this team in overhead? I got no overhead, I can do whatever the hell I want, etc. He just looked at me and he said, question, is it better to build a dream by yourself or with your friends? I said, touche, motherfucker. Too shit. So now I got a team, right? He just kind of hit me with it. 21, stop cleaning. Stop doing errands. Stop doing non-profit producing activities. Hire an assistant. One of my coaches told me a long time, you've heard it before, if you don't have an assistant, then you are the assistant. Hit me right in my chest. Stop wasting time. Go spend time on revenue generating things. 22, this one's just ignorant, horrible advice. Stop saving money. No? No response, okay? Well, let me explain what I mean. Is, obviously you should save money, obviously you should be financially responsible, but the other thing is that not enough people talk about at business conferences is have some fucking fun. Start buying some ignorant shit. Hmm. You ever see the comments? And they're like, oh, waste money on a Lamborghini? Lamborghinis are fucking sick. Especially when you got two. Like, the Sprinter, like, all that shit is fun. Like, when I was a kid, I had, like, posters on my walls of, like, all the cars and stuff. It's fun. Honestly, I would not be in front of you today if I wasn't driven by materialistic things. When you get there and your foundation is set, now you can focus on helping others. Now I don't give a shit about a Lamborghini, but during the come-up, it's the only thing that mattered to me. Fuck saving the world. Fuck feeding kids. In the beginning, that's what it was. Now, that's my whole life. But you're never going to worry about helping other people when you're sitting on a shaky foundation. Can't stress that enough. So, design your life, then design your business, and last but not least, stop doubting yourself. And start believing you can do anything. And I'm gonna leave you guys with this example of how much of anything that you can do. So, <laughs> I, uh, I sold nothing. Now, if you can see the picture there, there's clearly nothing in my hand. And when I tell you I sold nothing, like I genuinely mean it. Here's the landing page. It says, yes, I would like to add nothing to my order for a one-time payment of $9.95. Yes, you read the right. For less than 10 bucks, you can get immediate access to absolutely nothing. Once you purchase nothing at the discounted rate of $9.95, you will receive nothing but an email confirming you purchased Nothing. Nothing isn't just a lifestyle. Nothing isn't just a state of mind. Nothing is nothing. Only an idiot like me would try and sell this, but I was trying to prove to my students if you can make people smile, if you can have fun in the process, then people will buy from you. And they're like, yeah, right, no one's gonna buy nothing, Billy. That's just disrespectful, blah, 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 blah. 523 nothing later. Wow. Oh, it gets even better. So I make five grand nothing, right? Which is cool, pays for my Lambo for the month. But I switched to this other thing. I got so excited by this nothing revolution that I went out and I started another company. It was called thenothingdepot.com. This is still a very real company. You can go to the site right now and you can buy boxes of nothing and send them to people you love. Especially during the holidays because everyone's got a family member who's like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, nothing? Perfect, I think you fucking nothing. We got it down in okay? So we have it. So I, I start this nothing depot. It's just out for kids, for shits and kicks. Let me do this nothing deep, okay? And, <laughs> where did you see it? I end up selling 1,011 nothings, okay? And generating $37,569. Wow, man. I, 
<laughs> it's so ridiculous. But I share this because I know so many people are having self-doubt, right? And you actually have something valuable to sell. This is truly no value. You know, they're like, how do you increase your business? You gotta add more value? Bullshit. Clearly you don't have to add more value. You have to add more smiles. You have to make it more fun. I I'm serious. When's, when's the last time that you've been through your website and said, hold on, let's reread it again and see if we can make somebody smile? And I'm serious. That's like a real tactical, tactician thingy, Robert. Like scientifically, what the fuck? Okay, so, um, what was that? Oh, give me a beer. Yeah, thank you. Yes, lots of beers. I have a feeling we're pretty drunk today. Just like walk around. People just hand me a beer. Okay, so check it out. And then I'll do a, a, some Q&A real quick. Um, I've created so many courses over the last 13 years. And uh, raise your hand if you'd like me to give you every single one of them for free right now. Woo! Literally every single one. No bullshit. All of them, etc. I think you guys got to help me out. That's what we got to do. I need you to stand up right now. So, I'm going to make a video, because you guys got to make one earlier, and I'm going to make a video this time. And specifically, because I want to thank Matt and the team for putting on a super fucking event. You know, I joke a lot, and I, and I talk a lot of shit, but this is one of the most humbling moments ever. I'm here as this bloody fucking wake up American on, the, on this London stage, and one of the most beautiful places ever, and I get to be here, like, this is a fucking dream. So what I want to do is I want to shoot a video for you guys, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Because I'm just going to record and I'm going to say some shit, but then when I turn around, I just want you guys to go fucking crazy so the footage looks amazing for them, right? That's all you can do, just go nuts. And then, hold on, Hector, let me give you this. When I do it, press the green button, so that way the song comes on. It's going to make it more dramatic. Anybody like rap here? Probably not, a lot of white people. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know white people like rap too. <laughs> uh, this is Billie Jean, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the Einstein Marketing crew that put on a phenomenal event in London, and if you guys need to learn anything about digital marketing, if you guys are looking for an event to go to, well this is one of the best in the fucking world. And I'll prove it to you right now, baby, let's go! <laughs> I want to do a quick Q&A if anybody has any questions. Warning, if you ask me something, expect an ignorant answer. That's all I can promise you, man. It's going to be very stupid. But do we have a mic up? Easy pass now? Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Go. Go ahead. Down here on this side. Oh, here we go. Wherever. I don't want to. You guys just choose so nobody gets mad at me for not picking them. Watch this button. Watch my hands. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Oh, sorry. What's the biggest mistake you made in digital marketing? <laughs> biggest mistake I made in digital marketing, what I learned from it. So it goes to the arrogant. I had a slide stop being arrogant. I really make these slides based off of myself because I was really arrogant. So it cost me, I had a friend who um, didn't sell drugs, but he gave me 30,000 bucks. And <laughs> it was like the start of my company that, you know, whatever. So. He gives me 30,000 bucks and he's like, Billy, you're the guy, you're always in entrepreneurship, I trust you. I used 25,000 of the dollars to buy this online learning platform. And at the time I had nothing to teach, I was gonna sell this quit smoking program, ironically. And I was licensing it from somebody else. But anyways, long story short, I spent the 25 grand on it, I'm super proud, I'm like, look at this website, it looks super sick. And then I found out later, after it was done about six months after, that the program that I paid for was actually free. And the people that charged me to do it, they just charged me to like upload files to it, which I could have done. So I literally ended up when it was all said that I overpaid 27,500 bucks because I was so arrogant that I thought I could figure it out by myself, even though I never built a website, even though I'd never done anything. And I had the nerves to think I could and I overpaid and I used all of this money. And I cried like a bitch for like a week. True story, like I remember, it still stings. It's like, oh, now, right? But it hurts. So that was it, I just always asked for help. Like, especially like right now, I know they have a mastermind. Like, I get nothing if you join the mastermind, but you're crazy if you're trying to do this alone. I would definitely take advantage of other people uh, and learning from their mistakes. What, what's the quote? You can either learn from your own mistakes or learn from somebody else's. I definitely now just would rather learn from someone else's. But I love the question, and thank you for being black.
<laughs> hey, Billy, uh, that was fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so much. One question. What's the one thing that you stopped doing in your life that's had the biggest single impact on who you are today? Um, well, uh, probably stopped wearing a condom. <laughs> uh, did, uh, 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 hold on, did, did, any, did anybody actually have a kid on purpose in here? So weird. Sorry, my daughter, my, my six-year-old daughter, I mean, she literally, like, I mean, you have a fucking kid, and I'm 27, like, maybe reprioritize everything. Before that, it was, you know, the clubs and all the ignorant shit, and she just made me really, you know, I don't know, I love her. She's my best. We hang out all the time, so it, it just calmed my ass down, had me focus, you know, and then also making money early, so that way I'm not driven by it anymore, and I can actually use my life to, like, do good shit that helps people. Also, in that same breath, shout out to my fiance over there. We just got engaged. Pop it up. <laughs> that pedal, that pedal, guys. That pedal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sure. Do a couple, couple more. Yeah. Really? Two more. Um, I've been a coach, a uh, business coach for 12 years. Now everybody calls themselves a coach, but they're just teaching something that they learned before and uh, sure. you know, giving some help, just like a teacher or consultant. How do we stand out from the noise? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the one thing to realize is, like, kind of like in life, there really is no new advice. For example, you know, take the Bible. Almost every lesson is from the Bible. However, there's different churches because different people communicate the message in a different way. So you have to find out your unique style of communication. For example, I'm not the only person who teaches marketing, but somebody here today may have really resonated with my style, so I'm for them. But my personality is so unique that you do have to make a decision. Someone's going, fuck this guy right now. That bloody American, get out of it. Another one's going, that's my bloody American, right? Like you have to make them choose. So, and then also too, the biggest thing to remember is that if you didn't record it, it did not happen. That's the very real world we live in. Because if not, then you come out in all of your videos and your ads talking about yourself. My name's Billy, I've been a business coach for 13 years and I've been helping people and people already don't give a fuck. So you need to record everything. So right here, Paul, my head of media, we travel everywhere together because I want to have proof. I can reach the 750 people sold out room in here, but this video will allow me to reach that in front of 75,000, 750,000. And so the proof really does matter. If you're not documenting every fucking thing that you do, you're leaving money on the table. Nothing sounds like proof. Okay, last question. Hey, Brian. Right. Billy, I've been following you for about, yes. geez, six years now, so legend. I appreciate you, thank you. No worries, brother. Uh, I coach kids confidence to do around the world, go on stage and speak it. Um, my question to you is quick fire. If you could change the education system, what three lessons would you put in and why? Yeah, kindness is one, right? Like everyone talks about this whole bullying shit, but there's actually no one that actually teaches you to be kind. Right? Like, and if you grow up in a violent household, like I, you know, my grandfather was murdered, my uncle was murdered, we grew up in a, around a lot of drugs and things like that. Weirdly enough, kindness is not normal. You have to be taught it, and a lot of people are ignorant to that. So that would be one. Secondly, it would be a, a what up? They teach you the UK? Shout out, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll move, fuck it. Uh, then the other thing that I would teach is credit score. Like, America, no one talks about credit score. And then obviously, I'm gonna go out, since this is my last question, and say motherfucking marketing. Like, everybody should know marketing from whether you have a nonprofit, you need marketing. Whether you're a coach, you need marketing. You need a bit, like, whatever. All roads lead to marketing, and it's created this opportunity for me today. So, having said that, you guys, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I appreciate it. I love you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys.